Section 6.3, Trapezoids and Pipes. Our objective is students will successfully recognize and apply the properties of trapezoids and pipes. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So for example, PQRS is a trapezoid. So we call it trapezoid PQRS. Does this mean that a trapezoid is a parallelogram? So my question is, is a trapezoid a parallelogram? So since the trapezoid has only one pair, parallelograms have to have two pairs of opposite sides being parallel. The answer is no, a trapezoid is not a parallelogram. There's some parts that we must label on a trapezoid. The two sides that are parallel are called bases. The two sides that are not parallel, those are called legs. We have another part that are called base angles. Base angles are the angles formed by one parallel side and a leg. So angle P is a base angle, angle Q is a base angle, angle R is a base angle, angle S is a base angle. Now we will not be using the term base angles until we do isosceles trapezoids, which are next. An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid whose legs are congruent. An example of one is below, trapezoid A, B, C, D is an isosceles trapezoid because these two sides are congruent. We have some properties besides our one set of sides being parallel for isosceles trapezoids. The property is both pairs of base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. And what it means by pairs, they have to be along the same base to be congruent. So if ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid with bases BC and AD, and with them telling you that, you know BC is parallel to AD. So we do have, in fact, an isosceles trapezoid. One base angle is angle A. If I follow the base that formed A, I will get to the other base angle that A is congruent to. So Angle A and angle D are congruent. The other pair, angle B, is congruent to, follows B's base, and you will get to your other part of the pair, angle C. Besides base angles of a trapezoid, we also have what is called a median of a trapezoid. This is the segment that joins the midpoints 
of the legs of the trapezoid. So if M and N are midpoints, so M and N are midpoints, then when we connect them, we say that segment MN is a median of a trapezoid. There is a theorem about the median. The median of a trapezoid is parallel to the bases. So if I come down to my picture, F, G, and E, H are my bases. They have to be parallel. So does M, N. To continue on, and its measure is one half the sum of the measures of the bases. So again, if M and N are midpoints, then MN is parallel to FG and MN is parallel to EH. Along with I can create a formula. The length of MN is equal to one half, and it says the sum, so I'm going to add the measures of the bases. So the length of FG plus the length of EH. So for some examples with these, find the length of the median given that ABCD is a trapezoid and M and N are midpoints. So with this being a trapezoid, these guys M and N being midpoints, I can say MN is one half and the two bases are BC and AD. So now I just need to plug in numbers. So MN is 1 half 10 plus 30. So 1 half 10 plus 30 is 40. Half of 40 is 20. So the length of MN is 20 units. Okay. The same is true even if we have expressions. So given that this is a trapezoid and we know that this is a median, that means EZ and IO are our bases. So we know the median AB is one half the sum of the two bases. So one half EZ plus IO. Now that I have the base equation set up, I now plug in what I know. AB is 13. I have one half, EZ is 4X minus 10, IO is 3X plus 8. Now, I know that you are not big fans of that one half. So to get rid of the one half, I can multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times 13 is 26. One half times two cancels, and I'm left with just the inside. So 4x minus 10 plus 3x plus 8. I now need to combine like terms, so I get, let's light that up a little bit first. So I get 26 equals 4x and 3x is 7x. Negative 10 and 8 is negative 2. I'm now going to add two to both sides. So I have 28 equals 7x, I'm going to divide by 7, and x equals 4. Okay. 
1979. Next isosceles trapezoid theorem we have is the isosceles trapezoid diagonals theorem. If a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then the diagonals are congruent. So, is this an isosceles trapezoid? If, iso if trapezoid ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid, so we do know it is an isosceles trapezoid. Using this theorem, we then know, and we need some diagonals. So we're going to go ahead and draw those in. So I'm going to connect B to D. And I'm going to connect C to A. These are the diagonals. So with having this as an isosceles trapezoid, we now know that AC is congruent to BD. Again, this is only true if it was an isosceles trapezoid. Our next quadrilateral is a kite. This shape is not called a diamond. A diamond is not a mathematical term, and if you write that on quizzes or tests, you will not get it correct because we need to call the shapes by their proper name. And diamonds, some people think of a rhombus, and some people think of a kite. So that's why it's not a mathematical term. But a kite's definition is a quadrilateral with two sets of adjacent sides that are congruent. And if we remember, adjacent means next to. So on my kite, AB is congruent to BC and CD is congruent to AD. There is one really big important theorem about kites, and it's about the diagonals. The diagonals of a kite are perpendicular and the shorter diagonal is bisected. So if we connect our diagonal, so B to D, and A to C. First thing is they're perpendicular. So BD is perpendicular to AC. And the shorter diagonal, that's our AC. Okay. This AC is bisected. So I'm going to go ahead and name this center point E so we can Write that a little easier. And we now know AE is congruent to segment EC. There is one more useful thing about a kite. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a kite down here at the bottom. Uh, let's call it A, B, C, D again. If we connect it long ways, there is a set of angles that are also congruent. See how I could take this triangle and fold it on top of that triangle down that diagonal? Angle A and angle C are congruent. This does not work if I draw the short diagonal. Okay, so where do trapezoids fit in our Venn diagram? So our outer box is polygons. We had quadrilaterals and triangles. We're looking at 
quadrilaterals right now, so we broke them down into parallelograms, rectangles and rhombi, and then they overlap with squares. And we've discussed that trapezoids are not parallelograms, so they cannot be inside that parallelogram box. However, a trapezoid still has four sides, so a trapezoid can and does belong inside of our quadrilateral box. Okay, So this is a trapezoid. If we wanted to talk about where our isosceles trapezoids were, they would be within our trapezoid box. Okay, so this is our isosceles trapezoid. Our kites, they again are quadrilaterals, but they are not parallelograms. So they are inside the quadrilateral, but not inside parallelograms. So they're over here. We can put them over here. And these are our kites. Okay, let's play our sometimes, always, never. Oops. Trapezoids are never parallelograms because again, their box and the parallelogram box do not overlap or not contain with inside of each other. Parallelograms are blank trapezoids. They are never trapezoids. So again, both ways, they are never. Your homework is trapezoids and kites.